Well, I know you can't see me. I don't know if you can hear me, but uh, I'm going to announce it uh, at the bench. And a uh, new topic. Sunday building with Sparky. Okay. Uh, bring this back now. All right, guys. I see we got four viewers. I'm sorry I had to. I took so long getting going. Five viewers. What I'm doing today is I'm in uh, Stunhanger East. <laughs> And as most know, I built a couple of voodoos. Uh, let me show this here. I built those two voodoos there. And uh, I got more engines than I got airplanes now. So now I have to build airplanes <clears throat> to match the, uh, or, yeah, so I got the same amount of airplanes as I do engines. So we're gonna build, a couple more voodoos. I got a couple more of these uh, baseball bat leading edges. I got these from Shapers. These were five bucks a piece. I had traced all the parts to the voodoo out on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of uh, paper. And before I left, I, I cut a few pieces, such as the uh, bell crank floor. And uh, for cheat cows, because I don't have a bandsaw here. And I cut some booms on my table saw. So now all I got to do, I, I just uh, cut the trailing edges. So I'm making a kit here. And uh, I'll probably get one laid up today. But I'm going to show you how, I, how to transfer the old way. The rib set, the balsa wood. Now, most of the guys who are scratch builders already know this. So, if, you know, if you already know it, that's that's fine. But there are some people that uh, don't know. I brought, uh, I don't know, about eight foot of uh, lead out wire. <clears throat> I've been, I use these uh, perfect bell cranks. Now, these are not the same as they used to be. They got a crappy nylon bushing that i don't know whether that's going to hold up or not so i'm going to get a washer i already put one in that other voodoo i'm going to get a washer to uh put under this to kind of capture it at work tomorrow so i'm going to clear off the uh a little bit of Stuff I got here on the bench. And uh, this is like building in a, in a uh, hotel room here, so I have to be, I have to kind of be mindful of the mess. I can't, uh, I can't make a big mess like I do at home. So we're going to get out some wood now. I've changed this up from the kit. The kit uses all 16th. I'm going to use all 332nd, but the 332nd wood that I've used is a whole lot lighter. This is one I just had cut out. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Mark it out for the other kit. And I had just rough sanded this. 
forget to finish and later this is a for the other kit to make it easy i already cut the wing tips for the other kit so and i got a tip pattern too so that's okay so how am i going to get these ribs onto that wood These are the eighth inch ribs, so I brought eighth inch. Got two, I need to cut uh, four centers. And those centers are eighth inch ribs. If it's four eighth inch ribs, the rest will be three thirty second. So what I normally do, they take a stick bin, put your template up there, and start poking holes. Kind of boring, repetitious. I, you know, I know that uh, when I do the voiceover videos, it's uh, it cuts out a lot of the repetition and wait time. But this will give you an idea how we used to do it when I, you know, years ago when I used to build off plans. Anymore, I just build it out of my head. But think of it. The set of plans for the voodoo you can't build from. You might have build from a drawing or, you know, a picture of it. Because there's no measurements, it's uh, like eighth scale. So what I'll do here is, is I'll make this set, cut it out, and mark on it center rib, and that'll be a pattern. And you can't use you have to use the same pattern over and over again. You can't. You can't uh, use one to the next because what you have is a stack. It'll start stacking up. By the time you're done, it'll be eight of an inch bigger than the next one. You use this rib to cut the other one, the other one to, to mark the other one. It's all a pencil width wide or a pen width wide. You end up with a bigger rib. So I'll make a pattern, sand it so it fits the. Uh, Fits this exactly, then I'll use that pattern to make the rest. Now, I could have done that, could have done this with the, with the stock voodoo kit ribs, and it would have been a whole lot easier. But it, I don't know, I just I wasn't really going to do this, but I kind of decided that I was going to do that this year. Okay, I, I don't want to leave off this either. This is the jigging tab. So I want to make sure to get that on. And I went along the uh, rib mark so that I can cut the jig tab off because we don't have the luxury of having it uh, laser cut or perf perforated. So there's there's the uh, the pattern for the first rib and I'll mark it out with a pen. Well, I have a little blue one. 
And you don't really need to mark mark that with a pen. You can see the dots. You can just kind of follow along with the dots. But we're going to cut out the square for the spar. Sure, Terry's built lots of scratch built wounds, or maybe not. I don't know how many guys actually scratch built. This adds a little bit of time setting out the parts, but uh, it's not nothing too bad. I think I need a new exacto blade in this knife. You want to be comfortable. <clears throat> I was hoping somebody would come in and talk to me. I can't see the chat box. I suppose I could go over. I mean, it's just, it's so difficult to do this, guys. You got to bear with me and help me a little bit. Come in and talk to me. I can build these things so fast if I didn't have to uh, look at the chat box. Type in this, type in that. So make it easy on me. I'd appreciate it. Now there's our first rib. So now you can see it's a little lumpy there. Not a big deal. I know I had a I had a standing block. What happened? Probably staring me right in the face again. Oh, what the hell? Let me see if I can get the chat up. I know somebody's probably chat chatting at me instead of coming on. I can put the link in chat too. Oh crap. Uh, go here. Yeah. Another voodoo, Frank. Face. There's the link to come into the into the hangout. The television is behind me, so I can't see. So there's this. Here we go. So now we just clean up the lumps. Perfect. Perfect. I think it's better to cut that cross grain because that's a little harder wood for the back saw. Let's see how it fits this leading edge because this is not a stock leading edge. Now, I could have, I could have notched these leading edges, but I couldn't get my damn saw to 
to bleed the Lord. Let's see what it says here. Hey, Lyle. Lyle, go to at the bench in Stunhanger and click on that link. I think they blocked posting the link in chat. The link is the link is in Stunhanger at at the bench. It'll say building with Sparky. Of course, if you're a subscriber and you rang the bell, you'll get a notification that I'm streaming live. Everybody make sure to like, subscribe, and share the videos. Another thing, uh, got the chicken wings t-shirts. They're really cool. The shirts print every three days. Couldn't probably tell you that. Here brought my needle file, but I didn't. Okay, one done and 18 more to go. Guess we can uh, trace over the top of it. Make it a lot faster than pin pricking. Here we go, there's somebody. Who we got here? Gotta turn your band turn your bandwidth down. Uh, here we go, there's somebody. What do we got here? Chase doesn't need any more push. Gonna turn your bandwidth down. You gotta shut shut the other YouTube. At third place, even with Elliot behind, Blaney and Keslowski. You're echoing, shut the other YouTube window down. Right behind us. What do we got here? If you turn that YouTube window down, I'll have to commute. Well, they will. Bay in sixth, and Ricky Stenhouse in tenth. You gotta shut. Does that work? Well, I don't know what I'm hearing in the background. Are you listening to the race or something? Yeah. I didn't think it would pick it up. Let me put it on mute. There, it's on mute. Okay. Let me turn this down a little bit. <clears throat> what is this? Uh, you're watching Daytona 500 now, huh? Yeah. What are you building? I want to build a Voodoo, and I want to build a Quicker. I got the plans for a Quicker, and I got a Voodoo kit. I got a double kit. I got it on eBay. Yeah. What do you have to do? I don't want to ruin the kit. I want to make it scratch. Yeah. I've got a few of those solid leading edges I picked up at the hobby shop that closed down over in Lee, Massachusetts. I picked up three of those 36 inch solid leading edges, the SIG ones. I think it's the right shape. What's yeah, close enough? Matter. These are SIG, but it don't matter what shape it is. 
if you have a router, you could make it yourself. I don't have a router. Yeah, I'm building another voodoo. I want to see how you put the hole in for the spar. Because the spar goes, you got to make one of those, what, metal, square metal tubes and sharpen the edge and punch it? No. How did I make the hole for the spar just like that? Yeah. I just cut it. <laughs> I just took it and cut it square and... I'll get, get my needle file and clean it up a little bit, and that's it. All right. It's not rocket science for sure. No, no ain't none of this shit is. No. Nope. Yeah. This wood is rock hard, just like kit wood here. This, you know, I got some real good wood behind me. That stunt wood. So when I went home, and I was, you know, I'd been home for the last week, I decided that I'd build another voodoo and get rid of some of my RC wood. So even my RC wood is lighter than the kit wood. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. But it's still rock hard. Are you going to put a metal tank in it, or are you going to put a pacifier? Pacifier. Did you see the other two I built? No. Oh, that's sweet. Uh -huh. That's G2135. There's a baby pacifier in it. Yeah. That's how we used to do it. I just forgot how to build that pod. Do you have anything inside the pod, like a rubber ball or something to uh, line it? No. What I used to do in the six, late 60s, early 70s is I'd get a wiffle ball, one of them plastic yeah. baseballs, yeah. and mount it in the tank or in the wing. And I got this, this voodoo here. Now, I got some more engines. They've been there at work, so I... I got an engine for this one, and I got another engine for the one I'm building. So I got to have at least three, plus I got to have three backups for each. <laughs> so yeah. that's six of them. Now, that looks like the short boom version. Is that the short boom, the original? Yeah, this is the original. Yeah. And this, this is the modifications that the guys are doing today. The long boom. Yeah. Yeah. I only had short booms when I was back in the day. I didn't ever know about long booms. That's all I had, too, is the shorties. What engine are you putting in that one, the short boom? They're all G2135. Okay. I got three Johnson Combat Specials to put in mine. Actually, I think I might have a fourth Combat Special I bought online. I won it in eBay. 65 bucks. How could I go wrong? Looks like it never been run. How can you go wrong? The only way to go wrong is you got to try to find parts for it. <laughs> yes, I know. The only parts, the only parts that that I think I really would need for it, I has the original needle valve assembly, but I'd like to change out the spray bar and needle valve so that I don't because I know you can't if if you land inverted and you break it the way it's constructed, if you remember, it breaks off at the thread because the needle valve screws, the spray bar has a thread on the outside and the needle valve screws down and that spray bar snaps in a heartbeat. I remember. Yep. So I, I don't know whether, which one, I don't want to drill the case out. So I don't know if I can use a Super Tiger style or an OS or an Enya. I don't Which remember. I, I didn't mess. I mean, my friends had some Johnsons, but they weren't very, they weren't very fast, so I didn't mess with them. Yeah. I 
I almost bought a Fox 36 X on eBay, but I decided, you know what? Uh, I'll stick with the Super Tigers. I got I got three thirty six X's ball bearing custom combats, and I got one of those called the Baldy. Now, is there a difference between a thirty six X and a thirty six X BB? They look the same. Yes, the BB has one ball bearing. I used to think it was a dual ball bearing, but it's not. It's a single ball bearing. The front is still bushed. And the Fox 36X, that doesn't have it's bushed? The 30, there were two versions of them. They both had bushed front ends, but the rear bearing on the early ones was a needle bearing. And then, and then the later ones that were sold with a box that said BB were ball bearings. Uh, but it was only the rear bearing. It wasn't the front one. That makes sense. I could say it's been a long time since I messed with them. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then there were some custom ones. That, there were some custom ones that Larry Skrinsky built that were ball bearing LS, but he got all the original engines from Fox and then he did something to them and I'm not sure what, but I know one thing he did was he took a file to the square intake and he put a bevel on it. So when you looked at it from the front, instead of seeing a rectangle, it was the shape of a diamond. He truncated that front intake, but what else he did other than maybe, you know, did a little work to fit them and lap the piston. And I have no idea what, if he played with the timing or did any other stuff to him? I have no idea. It's been 50 years since I messed with Voodoo. And how do I know it's 50 years? 1969. I had an orange Voodoo on the back patio when they landed on the moon. That's oh, hard. yeah. I remember that. Well, my last Voodoo I built before I graduated high school. I graduated high school in 65, so I think I built that voodoo in 64. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how old this design is, but... I had, I had a voodoo, and then I and then I tried one of those vampires, but I don't remember what happened to that, and then I switched over and discovered the, the sneaker, and the sneaker was a much better flying airplane. We're going to try this with the long booms. That might have been, you know, that might be, you know, an added thing to help. I, I guess if they're doing today's booms, I, I don't know. What, what are you using for covering, if I may ask? Monofuse. So you're not doing silk? No. I want to silk mine. I got silk. And you can buy silk from that company that advertises. It starts with a D. I forget the name. I want to do silk. Nope. I just want to puke it. Well, your question's going to be when are we going to still be able to get that iron on stuff from Top Flight because what do you call it? It's bankrupt now. Really? You didn't hear about that? Tower Hobbies? Well, it's Tower Hobbies and it's Great Plains, but the, the it was all owned by Habico, and Habico is bankrupt. They declare bankruptcy. Well, that doesn't mean they're out of business. Well, the question is, are they going to remain in business or are they going to keep making product? I don't know. Well, if they, if they uh, it's kind of like everything else with our hobby. If they quit making it, uh, you know, we'll... Uh, We'll go back to something else, you know. That's if, right. Every everything that ever works for this hobby, they quit making. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying one of those uh, cover. What do you call that? The, the Tom Morris stuff, the iron on. Uh, that's good stuff. That's. Uh, I haven't never tried it. Polyspan. That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think I do one. I I would do one voodoo and polyspan. 
it's still paper. I mean, it's not as yeah. durable. Yeah. You know, yeah. the reason why I want to, you know, make these monocoat is I didn't have to do any finishing. Just iron it on and you're done. And you're done. Yeah, I agree. It's fast. Not only that, these probably won't last long. Yeah, and I saw I saw just when I started this session, you were mentioning about bell cranks. What are you doing for bell cranks? I went to Shaver's Hobby, and I got these uh, perfect bell cranks. Yeah. They look the same as the old ones, but the bearing is nylon instead of metal. Oh. And I don't like how it's captured. I, you can't see it much on the video here. Yeah. But how, how it's captured is... Very suspect to coming apart. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get get a big washer and and put it on the bolt, and that way it can't come off. Yeah. It it's in its stock configuration in that airplane there, but if it comes apart, well, oh well. So you're you're installing it the way it was originally installed with a bolt. You're not doing it like we do in the stunt ones now with a, with a music wire captured top and no, bottom. No, I just put a bolt in it. Okay. I didn't want to monkey around. I just uh, decided that, you know, I put a 632 bolt in it with a bind nut and cranked it down and put epoxy on it and cut yep. it off and that's it. Yep, yep. That's how we did it. Are you bushing the bell crank? Are you going to bush the bell crank? You mean the lead outs on the bell crank? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a mistake that I I never knew to do. I, I Nobody told me to do it. Nobody ever educated me about it. And then when I would crash it and I tore it apart, I would see how the lead outs were sawing through the bell crank. Right. Yeah. I, I put... Uh little short pieces of brass on the lead out, drill it out, hook it around, you know. Yeah. Too bad we can't get a, somebody to make a, a duplicate of the old Vico steel bell crank. Well, Fox used the to Fox. have one. That's what's in Yeah. What, what airplane did I put? The, the Fox bell crank is in my, in my, oh, in my Nobler. Uh-huh. I just happen to have an old Fox. Bell crank hanging around those. I think the price tag on it was sixty nine cents. Yeah. The uh, price tag on these is two twenty. Wow. Too bad we can't find somebody that's got a laser cutter and they could cut out a steel bell crank pattern in no time with the laser cutter, and then all we'd have to do is drill it and put the find a way to put this the brass bushing in. Somebody. You'd have to get somebody with a lathe to make up a bunch of bushings. So I don't have a lathe. I don't have anything like that. I have a lathe. So this is uh, R3. What they numbered there. They're really goofy. Yeah, the, the voodoo plans, you can't build nothing from it. So you got to no. have the parts to cut it out. Yeah. But as I recall, the one rib is the same rib for everything except the center section. Negative. No? No, there's three different, different you know, they're all the same cord. Yeah. Three different styles. Oh. I didn't real. I don't remember that. I have to open up one of those kits and check it out. R, you got R one, which is a tip rib. R two, which is most of them. Then R three, which is a center rib, and then you have the very center rib. Oh yeah, the big heavy middle one. Yeah, remember that. I used to order plans from flying models, and my buddy Rob Gow and I would sit around for hours, freaking plans. 
making parts on wood. I'm sure there's a faster way, but this is how I did it when I was a kid. So yeah. doesn't doesn't Barry Baxter sell the plans for voodoo? I don't know. I think he does on Barry Baxter's plan service. I never ordered them, but I think he does. The uh, I got into this voodoo kick really strange. Yeah, I, I bought at Brodax last year a double voodoo kit. Yeah. And I was going to give it away on the forum to the combat guys. Yeah. But I happened to be looking in eBay one day, and I saw somebody selling G2135 for 50 bucks. Yeah. So that was a smoking deal. That's the one that's on there. I go, all right, well, now i got to build an airplane. Uh-huh. i got a motor, so... Then you know how eBay goes. I start perusing eBay, and there's another one, and and then another one. And so I got two sitting at work that yeah. were mailed. You know, so now I got to build some more. I I know what you're talking about. I know. So I've this got. Is, go ahead. I've I've got one of the kits from Walter, the the sneaker replica kit that he sold i haven't unpacked that one and my plan is again just to trace the ribs everything else is sticks and sheet the only thing you need is the shape of those ribs because it's a tapered it's a tapered airfoil from the cord down to the tip and then it's and i think it's a swept back trailing edge i'd like to say to the guys watching this i can't see the chat so if you're trying to type at me i can't see it yeah and if you'd like to join us, go to At The Bench on Stunhanger and get the link from there. Because obviously the link doesn't uh, work in the chat box anymore. Right. So. And I, and I, have, a set, I have a set of plans for a quicker. I actually have the bones left from my original quicker, but it's too far gone to try to resurrect it. You going to Brodax this year? I don't know. I have not figured out what I'm going to do. It's only February. I haven't decided if I'm going to. I'm ready for that long drive. I'd like to. Where do you live? Albany, New York. A long drive. It's a long drive across Pennsylvania. It's a long, long drive. And then yeah, you got to stop to eat and, you know, hit the restroom. And by the time you're done, you're on the road 10 plus hours. Yeah, Jerry and I did that with the trip to Bob Hunt. Yeah. I'd like to go. I talked to Bob about it. I go out to his area now and then to see some friends out near Allentown, and he said he's only half an hour off the road that I travel. So I'd love to go hang out with Bob Hunt and see, learn from him in his shop. Or else I'm going to come and drive to your house and crash in your garage. <laughs> bring, bring, bring a sleeping bag, man. Sparky's school of building. Well. But this is the know, next best thing, hanging out with you like this. Well, that's why I do these, you know, these videos are uh, more or less a winter project to keep everybody kind of engaged in the control line hobby. Well, it's very motivating because it shows, you know, when you see how, how you do it and your approach to it, it's, like I say, it's not uh, the only thing I do not have that that I envy you is you've got that power saw that, like, you're going to use that to, you know, the table saw to cut the notches in the leading edge and, you know, stuff stuff like that. I don't have that type of thing. And you can't buy a Dremel one. I mean, I've seen them online for, you know, eBay for cheap. I mean, for sale, used ones, but they're expensive. Well, I'm going to show you a trick. Uh, not today, but on this build, how to cut them notches without that. Because I'm in Ohio now, and I don't have all that shit over here. Oh, I'm in like a motel room here. No kidding. Wow. And yeah, this is a single. Let me show you. 
First off, up there, come on, up there is my nobler. Yeah. Then, uh, and there's the television. Yeah. And hanging there is my Monado. Yeah. And then uh, behind me here, uh, we got the voodoo's there on the bench. My computer's on the table yeah. there. There's my Junar. There's a bunch of wood I brought from home. Wow. There's my kitchen, and that's the end of the tour. <laughs> wow. So how 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 much time do you spend living in this motel room that you got all this stuff with you? Uh, about three weeks a month. Oh my. And then you pack it all up and you drag it home and then you come back again? No, oh, I got shit at home. <laughs> so what do you do with all this stuff when you leave? You just stay with the hotel room? You leave it? This is not a hotel room. It's an efficiency apartment. Oh, okay. Where it's in Ohio like, is it? It's like a hotel room, though. Oh, where in Ohio are you? Dayton. Dayton? Okay. I need to find out if we're going to go to the Dayton or the Toledo show. That's perfect. I was going to ask you if you go out when the Dayton buzz something buzzard something or others they have that speed contest that's there's a lot of speed guys out there i'm an honorary buzzard are you yeah i got the keys to the field i mean like what can i steal well yeah <laughs> the grass yeah but they, they they there's a lot of speed contests that's probably for me in new york that's I used to play around with speed a long time ago, and then I, I never really, I never really kept up with it. But I thought I was going to be a speed guy back twenty years ago, and uh, now, of course, around here, there's nobody flying speed within two hundred miles of me. I think the closest one is maybe whoever's left in Philadelphia or over in Pennsylvania that used to be the Van Sants, and. Uh, at the time, there was a guy. He set the, the record in A speed and B speed back in the 80s. His name was Nick Schur. I don't know if you knew the name. No, I don't no. know what happened to him, but he, I met him, and he, when I, when I had the kind of money it took to build an engine, he built up a couple of Super Tiger 29Xs for me. And they, got I had, one of those, they got one of those up bid on eBay. Yeah. There are a lot now, but again, here's, I mean, first of all, there's nobody within 200 miles of me that would have any interest in it. And there's no place to fly them. So it's kind of like just, you know, I call myself an armchair speed guy. I like to watch the video YouTubes and I read, I see every, all this stuff that you can find on Facebook. That's, they have a special site for the guys that do the international FAI stuff, but those motors, 600 bucks for the motor and the models. I mean, it's all professionally built. If you don't have the resources to fly it and somebody to pit it and help you and a place to fly it, you're just kidding yourself. Well, let me ask you this. Now, think about this. What good is it if you buy your airplane, you have somebody build your motor, and yeah. some of these guys proxy fly it. So That's what right. do you do? It's just a matter of how you spend your money, I guess, and say, oh, well, gee whiz, I did it. It's the same thing. I, I'm fascinated by these guys that have the inter the team racing, okay? And they have a team race site on, on Facebook. And these guys are building these all-composite, team racers with these $650 15 size diesels in, from Russia and you buy a ready-made plane and a ready-made engine and, the, and and then you got to buy the tank and the, and, the, and the refueling gizmo and the shutoff and before you know it you got a thousand dollars out on the end of the line okay now here in the United States other than the Nats and maybe when they have the FAI trials for for USA team where are you going to find 
real FAI team racing guys that are going to get in that part of the hobby in this country. Never happened in a hundred years. It's, it's dead. Florida. Well, yeah, Florida. Well, you got Bob, Bob in Florida there with me. But again, there's just but but even there, maybe there's one team, maybe uh, that that goes and on, and who do they compete against themselves in the stopwatch? And then if you want to be competitive, I was reading up all about it. The fuel that you have to get to mix that fuel, the ingredients, because it, nobody will sell you the ingredients. They've got one guy that'll, they convinced they're not making uh, illegal drugs with it. Cause I guess it's the same ingredients that the people who make ing illegal drugs use. So they got somebody to sell them the stuff under, you know, they had to sign all kinds of papers that that was the only use for it. They weren't going to resell it. They were only using it for their own use. They're not trying to use it for drugs. And they got somebody to sell it to them for legal liability purposes. Nobody will sell you that stuff. It really upsets me that that criminals or whatever have screwed things up. You know, we can't, we can't get good plastic glue anymore. I went into glue a Williams Brothers pilot together. Yeah. I said, I like to buy a tube of Ravel glue. Don't yep. think so. No, we haven't sold that in years. Wow. Said, okay, what do you got? He said, well, we got this tester. So I might use this tester stuff. It might as well have been white glue. It was crap. Wow. Now, if you, that's just interesting because, again, on Facebook, I found and I joined up on this group that's strictly into building plastic plastic models and I never thought since I was 10 years old and I used to buy a plastic model like you say with a tuba tuba testers glue how did I know how to build a plastic model but I've now read up and watched the YouTube videos the guys that do it that are really good that, that that's a whole other part of model building hobby and they've got again online sources for how they do the gluing and how they get this liquid cement and they're way beyond testers but there's stuff out there you got to know where to find it. Yeah, I think they're using acetone or maybe that uh, PVC plastic uh, glue. Maybe, you know? maybe. It could be. But, man, oh, man, that's unbelievable to watch that stuff. And my only interest in it was, I thought, but I'm, I came to the realization, I'm not going to sit and piddle around with, with, you know, buying all the colored military paints with a little tiny brush that you got to sit with a magnifying glass and, and, and paint, paint the, you know, the throttle lever and paint this and hold it with a tweezer. And like, and what I, you do with it? Once it's done, set it on the shelf. Done, all you do is look at it on the shelf and say how pretty, but it's a lot of workmanship. The guys that do it, unbelievable. But to me, the satisfaction of doing what you're doing, it'll never match. No, because once I'm done with this, I can take it out and destroy it. That's right. And then build another one. You build another one, exactly. Exactly. I, I love building. I, you know, that's. Uh, I find I, it very therapeutic. Just car carving a cowl. I just enjoy it. That was the whole deal behind model airplanes. I thought is the building aspect. Now they they want to you know buy a Russian airplane and. Oh yeah. Say that I did. We didn't do that. Some somebody else did that. I I ended up as an engineer in my in my life in my working career, and so much of my success in my professional life as an engineer, I can tie back. And I don't tell this to a lot of people to what I learned building model planes on the workbenches as a kid in high school. Well, you just told the world. Well, yeah, I doubt very many people are listening and care. But I'll tell you one thing, it kept me it kept me off the street, kept me out of trouble. When the kids were running around, even back in the day, getting in trouble and being wild. I was my mother knew where I was. I was downstairs in a basement, you know, with a tube of ambroid glue and some balsa wood. And the worst she could worry about is if I was breathing the ambroid fumes. Let me and tell you about my model my model career. It started out, my uncle Jerry broke his leg. And my dad and him flew in 1948 when he, while he was recuperating, he stayed with us. Yeah. He started building a Thunderbird, a Deco uh, dumbest yeah, yeah. kit. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought it was cool. And then we started building half A's and this, that, and the other. And pretty soon I started building airplanes in my bedroom and I outgrew the bedroom. So my folks moved out of the master bedroom and said, we'll swap. 
and I went into their bedroom and then kept building and shit. I grew out of that. We opened up. I got a call here. All right. Hang on just a second. Hello. You got the wrong number. Huh? Anyway. Anyhow, I moved out into a two-car garage. I filled that up. My dad bought a hobby shop to support my hobby. <laughs> Holy shit. So... Well, I didn't get that far. I started off with a little scientific cafe or a little Cox 049. Never got that to fly. Then I met some friends in seventh grade that said, you got to get a ringmaster and a McCoy 35. So I got the ringmaster and the McCoy 35. And of course, I didn't know how to run that McCoy at all. So before long, that thing wore out. But then... Somebody said, you're wasting time with a McCoy 35. Go down to the hobby shop and get a Fox 35 for eleven ninety five. So we bought a Fox 35, and that's what got me going. And I was building in my bedroom on the top of an old dresser that my mother, when she found out that I was pinning wood down and driving pins into the top and getting glue all over her good furniture, was she ever pissed? And she threw me down in the basement. And then the first time I cracked open a bottle of dope to try to paint the wood and smelled up the house, she threw me downstairs in the basement. And that's BS because the fingernail polish is the exact, exact I chemicals. <laughs> I know, yeah. Hey, speaking of Ambroid glue, I know it's not available anymore, but I've seen online somebody advertising that the guys that do archery there's a product that they call Fletcher's glue for fletching, which is how they stick the feathers on an arrow. But I've never seen anybody say that they tried it for what we do. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't I have no idea. I have no idea. Are you and I the only ones on for a video right now that's talking? Yep. So let me ask you another question. You remember we had a conversation about a particular person who's on the stunt forum who uh, owes me a Vico 35? That yeah, never, I, never, I, never, uh, I never did anything with it. Sorry. You ever, you ever talk to him? Is he ever active anymore? I, I haven't seen him on. Really? I'll see if I can find you one. I wanted to put it in. I have I have a short kit that I got from. Um, from the fellow that had blue sky models. Uh, what's his name? He's out in Texas. Larry something. No, no, no. Blue sky models. He had the kit for the JD Falcon and a couple others. And now I think that Walter took over his kits. I want to uh, say I want to say Tom Morris, but it's not Tom Morris. It's another fella. I can't remember the name. This isn't minute. the guy who did the JD Falcon pass away? Well, that was the original designer. Yeah, he passed away. I knew him very well. Yeah. What was yeah, his name? John D'Octavo. Yeah, John D'Octavio. Yeah. But the rep, but he, he, the, the replica kits for his JD Falcon design were kitted by. He's in Texas now. Hey, Moon. No, not not Moon. Once I say the name, you'll know who it is. But he he ran his business. He called it Blue Sky Models for a long time. And he's on the, I've seen him on, on this forum, but I just, uh, my mind, I can't pull up the name right this minute. I'll think of it. Look on chat, look in the chat bubble on YouTube. They might yeah. be. Doing... Yeah, I'll have to look for it. I can't see the chat because I'm using my television and it's across the. Yeah.
you know, everybody knows everybody in this hobby. Oh, yeah, just about. Everybody knows me. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I did a, uh, I don't know if you watched it, I did an interview with uh, Hobby Show TV, them guys from uh, Argentina. Oh, yeah, no, I missed that. It was on their channel, Hobby Show TV. Oh. And That's... you can't understand it because it's in Portuguese. Oh, yeah. Unless you, unless you speak Portuguese. No, I don't. I could do Spanish, but I can't do Portuguese. But Well, I speak Spanish, too. Oh. But they got a girl on there, Carolina Florista. Yeah. I, I want to meet her. She's got to be 25, maybe. She's beautiful. Really? Yeah, hmm. but I'm invisible, young girls. <laughs> wow. Oh wow! You are too. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work now. Then I have. I also have a short kit that I want to build of. Um, of the Impala. Uh, I remember that airplane. Um, guy who just I, passed away. Yeah, it, 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 one. Ed Ed Elasiak. John Saunders had one. No, this doing it this way is a little slower than a kit, but that's all right. You don't have that many to do. I need to get my good wood. I think this is a uh, wood here cuts rather hard. <laughs> but Tom, the guy I'm thinking of, his name was Tom, Tom Newber. Oh, Tom Newber. Okay. Yeah. So I have I have from Tom, I have a short kit that he made of the Impala and the set of plans, and then I have a boxcar chief that he I bought a replica kit from, and I wanted to put that Vico thirty five in the in the boxcar chief. Well, if I run across one, I'll get one for you, but. On that other deal, I don't know what... I mean, I haven't even seen that guy. Huh. Just not right that he can just get away with it. That bothers me. But I'm not the kind of guy that's going to go put a posting up and let the whole stunt forum know how he screwed me. So it's not my style that he did that. But that's what makes the world go round, I guess. I know he was sick, and I heard all kind of excuses that he had health issues. But you know, I was just hoping he's somebody that lived near him and knew him. I'd even pay it. I'd say, go over to his house, pick up the engine, put it in a box. I'll pay the packaging. I'll pay the shipping. Drop it off at the UPS store and get it on its way over here. But wasn't meant to be. Another thing I want to build is I want to build. I have the plants. You have to scratch build it because you can't get a kit anymore. Although supposedly at one time there was a kit from Blackhawk, but he's out of business. And there's a guy in Canada that supposedly bought it out, but I've never seen him advertise anything. Is I want to build one of these little perky speed jobs. Make sure to glue the bell crank in. That's all I got to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. Do you ever play around with monoline? No. Nope, I don't know nothing about it. No. 
I have the gear for it. I have the handle and the everything you need to do it. We were talking about these voodoo's the other night. And yeah. Then, you know, asking what lines do I need to apply it on this at you? Yeah. They're telling me fifteens for the speed test and eighteens in combat. And I shit, I used to fly one of these on a walker too, really. Yeah, wow. Well, I in back in those days, I remember that just to be safe, I put them on 018s. Yeah, I figure anything going 100 miles an hour plus better be on an 018, but I guess a lot of guys say a 15 size line will be fine, but I don't trust it. I think it'll be fine. On a 15? 015s? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, again, you know, back in that day, I would I would load up, you know, twenty five nitro, put in missile mist or whatever the hell you could do, and if, <laughs> you, put, and if you put and if you put an eight eight prop on that thing, you'd be going one hundred and twenty miles an hour like nobody's business. But I don't know that I want to hang on to one hundred twenty five mile an hour plane now. It don't matter. So I go one hundred. Who cares? I go ninety five. Who cares? And I don't want to put in that kind of nitro on my Johnsons and blow them up. No, you're talking about missile mist. I bet McCoy engines would have been good motors if we if I would have understood, you know, fuel and because I use cock glow fuel in yeah. mine, I use missile mist, whatever I could get a hold of. Yeah. Well, my old. It's funny that you mention because. My first engine was a McCoy 35 and I didn't put much time on it. And then I had it here in the house and I had it taken apart and I never knew how to put it back together. Right. So I never use it anymore. But I saw again on the flying lines website, those guys out West in Oregon or wherever they are. Yeah. Somebody said he rebuilds McCoy's. So I sent them an email. He sent me back. He says, put it in a box send it out to my house and I'll look it over. And if it's usable, I'll put it back together and I'll charge it just for the parts. So that's what I did. And I paid him for the shipping both ways. And he sends me a letter. He says, here's your engine back. He says, send me a check for 20 bucks. That's all it costs me to put it back together. I put it on the bench. It runs like new. He says, you never ran it. it the bushing was fine. And the, Sleeve and piston fit was not worn out. So I have one of those. And then I got another one from a guy on an old style combat wing that looked like it was it was a swept leading edge. I'll have to put send you a picture of it. And in any case, it has a McCoy 35 on it that I don't think has any time on it. And the way I know that is because the glow plug that's in it is still got that gold anodized that the tester's plug had. So I don't think that thing ever ever had a plug put in it other than the original plug. So how much time, if they even ran it, could it have run? So I have that. But now what I like to do, I do you have any idea who would know if I switch over all the screws in the head and the back plate over to socket heads, if it's a 440 like everything else, or is it some other crazy size? I think it's a 540. Oh. But I, I can't. Be sure, but I, I think it's I'm going to post the thing on the stunt forum on the engine side and see who knows if I want to switch it over to socket heads because I don't want to mess around with those Phillips heads. I never, I, I never had the right size Phillips head screwdriver, and I bugger up the screws and. And then crappy Phillips head screws were never worth a shit. And they never were worth a shit anyway. So if I'm going to run that McCoy. I mean, now I would know, you know, that I have to run it on, on some, you know, all caster. Like I do my Fox 35s, I run it on 28% caster, you know, GMA 20%, 25% oil, 28. Yeah, if we'd have known what we knew back then, but I know now, I think the McCoys would have lasted a long time. Oh, for sure. Oh, I think so. Yeah. And I don't think that that tester's fuel that 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 must have not had much oil in it. Like I said, I ran mine on Cox Blue fuel. Oh, on Cox Blue or Red? Blue. 
blue. Yeah, but still, that didn't have enough oil for McCoy. Who knew? Nobody told us. But I had a lot of engines at that time. Yeah. Even I used to use a lot of the KMB fuel, the KMB 500. But I, I don't think. In a red can or yeah. orange can? Yeah, but I don't think that it had as much oil in it as the Fox fuel, as super fuel. This this voodoo here, I, you know, I, I built them other and I built one in two days and the other one in one day. I, these will probably take two or three days because I got to cut these ribs up. Yeah. So you're cutting each rib from one pattern, right? You made one yeah. pattern rib and you're just tracing it over and over. Yeah. I saw a guy on Facebook, I forget, he's out west somewhere. He's now selling replicas that he builds that he'll sell for you for a hundred bucks of a voodoo or a or a quicker. Have you seen that on the Facebook? No. I don't do Facebook. No? I'll have no. to send I'll send you the he's got a link. I'm gonna send you the link to him. And so I, I posted up, a couple of people did, and they said, will you sell a kit? He says, I'm working on a kit for it. But when he builds when he builds his voodoo, he showed a picture of it before he covered it and then after. But instead of doing the spar the way that you're doing it, which is through the center of the rib, he puts a upper and lower spar on. And, and instead of And instead of doing a solid leading edge like he does, he makes the leading edge out of a piece of half inch where he cuts a triangular uh, cutout into the rib, you know, half of the sh square shape. That'll work too. Yeah. Everything works. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, everything works. Once it's covered, it looks just like the same voodoo we all knew and love, but it's not the traditional construction, but who cares? From what I understand, it's just not a competitive airplane anyway anymore. No, it's not. Of course not. It's just doing it for the fun and the nostalgia and the feel good. So when you make your pattern rib, do you make it out of plywood? No, I just make it out of balsa. I don't have any saws here. Oh, that's right. You're not in the. You're not in your shop. That's right. Oh, somebody else is online. Just came on. Hello. Hello, Michael. Hey, good Hi, to Michael. see you, Martin. Good to see you, Lionel. What you build now? Another voodoo. Oh, okay. Got to have enough voodoos for all the engines I got. <laughs> <laughs> Considering that they go, you're a stick, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better you than me with that. When I was a kid and watched my dad do that, I said, uh uh. <laughs> this voodoo here will probably be the best performer because it'll be about five ounces lighter. That's always helpful. <laughs> Even though it's my shit wood, it'll, it still will be considerably lighter. Oh, now. Hey, Rusty. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, Rusty. Hey, Rusty. Wow. Michael. Mally. I'm out here. What's uh, on the board today? Another combat plane? Another voodoo. Gonna do uh, two more. Oh, wow. Is this the other one uh, in the box? Or you already built both boxed ones? I built both boxed ones already. They're right there. Oh, 
Yep, I haven't I, seen any of those in a long while. <laughs> yep, long boom and short boom. Looks good. <clears throat> I'm in the hangar east right now. <laughs> have have um, you flown either one of those voodoo's yet? Sparky? Yeah, I, workshop. I finished them yesterday. Oh. oh. Stun hanger east, you're out in Dayton again? Yeah. Oh geez. Well, let's see how many I got here. I only got 12 more to cut. <laughs> <laughs> you got gotten ribs one at a time. Yeah. Here's the easy one, so that would help. Have you ever tried the trick of taking the pattern that you got there on the paper, running it through a copying machine, and then turning it face down and hitting it with a with an iron like you would iron your clothes, and supposedly the pattern transfers off the paper back on the wood? I heard that, but I never done it. I've never done it yeah, either, but I have heard that too. Hmm. That might not work with those uh, forty-year-old plans. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, tracing that I made. He's not building off of plans. He made a tracing. Uh, yeah. 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 Those plans you can't build off of. They're useless. Those plans are not plans. They're instructions. Right. Yeah. They don't have a. Uh, a one-to-one -one picture on them, I bet, do they? Oh. But I, I asked I asked Sparky, he wasn't sure if he ever looked up whether, I think that Barry Baxter's plan service has a copy, of, a, a correct, you know, set of plans and templates that he sells. Hmm. I'll tell you what, as long as you guys are sitting there working on the computer, Rusty, look up Outer Zone and see if they got plans for voodoo on it. Okay. I bet they do. Huh. What you doing, Brad? I was digging through some of my dad's old stuff. I found some propellers that I don't know that I'd ever have a use for. And I don't even know if speed flyers have any use for anymore. What size are they? I've got three top flight 75Ns, one of which I think may have been installed once. Speed flyers will usually use a lot more pitch. I used to use a 7, 10 and a half. Okay. Uh, these are marked at pylon racing. Well, oh, maybe it's pylon racing. But I know back in the day when I played with B Speed, we had a seven ten and a half on a Super Tiger twenty nine. Okay, and I've got three with one that I think has been mounted, eight and a half, six and three quarters. And then I've got three that I have no clue how old they are. I don't. I think one of them may have been mounted, but they're testers nine ten. And they that, sounds like, the old. that sounds like something that would have gone on a McCoy twenty, uh, McCoy sixty, maybe. We got several voodoo's on outer zone. What wingspan is yours, Sparky? About thirty six. Yeah, thirty six is the standard size. All right, I'm seeing a, a forty and a twenty four. The name of the designer is. Uh, oh shit! I can't even think. Uh, Riley Riley Wooten. That's it. Right. Okay. I got that. Oh, yeah. 36 inch. Got it. Okay. Open it up and see, does it have full rib patterns on it? Uh, let's see. Yes, it does. I see one rib template. Let me see if I can make it any bigger. Is there more than one size rib? Uh, they might have redesigned it, but yes, there's one. 
they're all the same size, but okay. they're a little different. Let me look here. The only difference in the outline should be that the center ribs are cut down to allow for the center sheeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Okay, outer zone. Voodoo. I'm downloading it now so I can maybe get a better picture of it. Okay, let's see. Download now. Yeah, that isn't the original plan. Let me, uh... Okay, I got it downloaded now so it's a bigger picture. Yeah, 11 332nd inch ribs required. Um, and you could build from that. That's not the original plan. Let me, uh, yeah, I could, build, I could build from that. Yeah, looks like the short boom version. I've never seen a long boom version until them guys told me about it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, they they show on the uh, on the plans there that they have a dotted line there on the rib set. To yeah, I just. Yep, yeah, I see that. That'll work. Oh, good. I got a copy of it now. Hmm. Maybe I'll go hunting for something. <laughs> I'll be back. A Johnson Combat Special, huh? Yep. Yeah. Wow, I just went to Barry Baxter's plan service, and I don't know how recent this posting was, but he says, due to health and equipment problems, I am unable to take any orders at this time. I'm not sure how soon I will be up again, if ever. Thank you guys for over 30 years of support. Check out the Jim Mears Combat Museum. Mm. So he may be done. Barry Baxter. Yeah, it sounds like it might be. I don't know how recent that was. This is a great, this outer zone is a great site. You knew about it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. There's one other one, but I can't remember which, what the name of it is. Boy, that's got a really sharp paper on that lead edge. What the hell happened to my camera here? Uh. Oh, shit. Yep, Barry Baxter lists the original voodoo CAD plan, but now you can't buy it from them. Hey, Lyle, do you know all we can see is the top of your head? Yes. Okay. You want to see more? <laughs> no. Oh. I didn't think <laughs> you want to see more. Sure you knew. Huh? I was just making sure you knew. Oh, yeah. That's how Steve Hines comes to us a lot of times, too. Well, I'm lying on the bed with my head up against the pillow when I got the laptop on my belly. Yeah. There you go. You can see more of me. Oh, uh, well, uh, don't make stuff uncomfortable on our account. <laughs> you do know we are still having the Monday and Friday night shows, don't you? Yeah, I've been kind of busy, but I'm trying to get back on them. Okay. I yeah, do enjoy them. I was telling Sparky that. They don't notify you on YouTube anymore. You you just have to know when the show's going to start and go oh. to this uh, 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 same place Sparky posted this link. Okay. Well, let me tell you about that notification stuff. This is for everybody watching this. When you subscribe, there's a little bell there. You have to knock, click on that little bell, and there'll be some parentheses that go around it. It'll say, uh, notify me of 
all activity. Click that and hit save. Then oh. it will notify you. Otherwise, it's quit notifying everybody. I, I get notifications. I just haven't been able to to log in. Well, I've been always, it's always a bad time. The shows that I do twice a week purposely are unlisted, so they do not send out notifications. Huh. That's to keep uh, the trolls and spammers yeah. away. Yeah. Here, if they come in, ain't no big deal. I don't care. Uh, I took my green screen down, notice? Yeah. That's so I could hang my Nobler overhead. What engine do you have in the Nobler? OS 32F. Oh. 32F? Is that a four-stroke or something? It's a helicopter motor. Uh, yeah, when I was uh, flying that Tudor at uh, Triple Tree in Huntersville this spring, I was using a helicopter motor. It was a, a, a Thunder Tiger 39 and nobody had ever heard of a 39 and i had to show everybody that it did say 39 on the side but it, it had been uh, turned into a control line engine and it was straight two stroke that's the only way it would run man it was thirsty to crank too you really had to give it a big gulp to get that thing started somebody had scrabbed hemi on the side of the head too i think it was hand scrabbed I don't 1990, uh, I, I was experimenting with pipe motors. I ran an FP40 on a less nearing pipe, and I ran a OS32F on a less nearing pipe. And that F motor in my Sorcerer just performed flawlessly. So uh, Dan McAtee, he has an F motor on one of his uh, horses. They started using it after... Uh, it, when Paul gave Mike Starrett the credit for, you know, using 32s, but I did it first. I was doing it for anybody. Anyway, so they run really good. And I decided, oh, it's a light little motor. It puts out a gob of power. I'll put it in that nobler and we'll give that a whirl. Have you been able to fly that since you built it? Or? I haven't finished it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the Which only I nobler I've had, I flew with an FP35 and it, it was beautiful. I have my two Noblers. One has a Fox 35 in it, and the only thing different is it's got the stuffer plate, and it's got the Hemi head, and it's got that ceramic piston and liner in it. So it's not a Fox 35. It's a Randy Smith 35. Well, no. We built it from parts, me and Bill Hummel, from parts that Bill had. Oh, okay. So what kind of material does it uh, is on that piston to make it called ceramic? I th I don't think it's the piston. I think it's a it's a coating on the liner. Oh, okay. Instead of chrome, instead of chrome plated liner, because they also had an ABC version of it. Yeah. But this they had yeah. they 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 made them with what they called ceramic, but the ceramic was a coating on the inside surface that lapped to the piston. Yeah. Um, ceramic is kind of a catch-all term, but the uh, Norvell big migs had a what they call the rev light and the newer ones and i bet that's sort of the same i bet it's the same stuff but you just treat it just like an abn yeah right? but it runs smooth as could be the only thing we never put in it was randy smith's high zoot crank and i don't know if it was ever worth the money and i wasn't going to spend it but it runs fine runs like a little sewing machine and then the other nobler i have is an engine that we got from that guy in the UK called Just Engines. Hey, Jim. So what? Hey, how are you guys? So what engine is it? The fire department's here. The first time she was gone, it was really like, wow, I miss her. And I still miss her, but now we're more understanding in that she has to go. So what are y'all building? Well, I was building another voodoo, but I'm kind of burnt out. I'm tired. Yeah. You're tired of building voodoo, Sparky? <laughs> no, I'm just tired. I decided to go out to the shop yesterday afternoon and do a little work on the Cardinal and uh, ended up spilling a bottle of acetone into the case that holds my electronic 
micrometer and uh, oh no it all up it still seems to work one of the buttons was a little sticky when i left it last night and i hadn't checked it today i just mm -hmm. bought that thing a year ago hopefully it didn't melt them <laughs> that's why what was it, about seven it. bucks at harbor freight I think I paid about 40 bucks for this one at Lowe's. You get them at Harbor Freight for about seven bucks. I'm going to make a trip out to Harbor Freight soon to get a, a two or three inch chop saw. So I think I'll pick a new one up out there. Whose noise is that? Is that Sparky? No, I'm not I've had the Olympics on all weekend. Mm. Hey guys, I'm gonna to have to sign off. This is Lyle. I'll be talking to you again. So when's the next broadcast? Did you say? Monday, 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 Monday and Friday. Monday and at, Friday. Uh, you said seven thirty. What in about nine forty-five Eastern time? Okay. Lyle, what yeah. engine was it you got from England before you go? Oh, it was it was it was a brand from Just Engines. That's the company. Yeah, and. They no longer manufacture that particular engine. I can't recall the name of it on the crankcase right oh, now. But I think, what's it? It's just an engine. Yeah, but <laughs> that was, but I can't remember the name of the brand that he was selling, but he converted it to control line. I think it was a 32. This makes me. Lebra or something? I don't know. I don't know, but it, <laughs> Puts out yeah. a, I may try to join you tomorrow run. night. Puts okay. out a good run. So does anybody here, Sparky wasn't sure, but I have a couple of McCoy 35s that are in good shape, but I would like to replace the head bolts and the back plate with socket heads, but I don't know the thread size, and I do not think it's a 440 like we're usually used on a lot of the engines. Hmm. So I'm trying to find out. May I'm going to post the thing online. And see who Randy knows. Smith, he knows. Who Randy knows? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. I want to change over the head bolts and the back plate to uh, socket heads. I think they're 540, but. Okay. Still... I assume I can get those in McMaster's catalog or someplace, right? Oh, yeah. 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 You won't find them at a hardware store, though. I don't know why. Yeah. But what I want to. I want to change. Have against I, I want to change. Like. I want to get rid of all the Phillips head stuff. Does anybody know anything about a Vico sixty one? Huh? Did that become B and B sixty one? No, it's an original Vico. I got a guy gifted it to me. He got out of the hobby. It was. It's set up with an RC carburetor, and uh, the only thing I got to find that it did not have is a nut for the prop shaft. I don't know what thread it takes. Hmm. What not? And I have to decide if I want to take it apart. It doesn't have socket heads. It has a simple slotted screw, but I would like to change that back out. I think I might send it to uh, the guy in California that rebuilds all those Vicos from years ago. Uh, he still advertises. Huh. Randy Lynn's auto? No, 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 no. He, he's in model aviation, and he says if you have a of Vico, and you want to do a Perry ported one? Clarence Lee, Clarence Lee, oh. Clarence Lee still works. He's say in his eighties, but he still advertises that. Wow. You send them a Vico, he'll rebuild it. It'd be a good Vico if he does it. I know, and it's got a and it's got a muffler for it too. So, wow. yeah, so I may do that. All right, I got to sign off, guys. Have a good okay, one. Bye. Okay, see ya see next week. Yeah, bye. Oh boy, yeah, I was I was working on parts, but I'm, I'm just exhausted today. You know, I drove all day yesterday, and it was intense too because it snowed. Oh, I mean, it, it took like an hour and a half to get out of St. Louis. There was all kind of crashes. The typical fools that know how not to don't know how to drive in snow. In other words, <laughs> oh, it's terrible, and it wasn't that bad of snow. It was just, there's no snow on the ground here now, but, I mean, it was snowing when I got here, but it was just a dusting, you know, and iced over. 
Is that that Saturn? You drive a Saturn, don't you? Yeah. Is that front wheel drive? Yeah. Yeah. Rusty went to outer zone and downloaded the voodoo plans. I took a wild hair and maybe eventually I'll put my G21 and what my dad used to have one in. I downloaded the super Satan plans. <laughs> now that will be quick. <laughs> I didn't even know they had one there. Yep, they do. That's a 39 inch span on that thing. <laughs> Let me look here. My aspect. It's kind of a skinny wing. Maybe I'll uh, build one of those too. Let's see here. Back. Back. The bad thing about it is now, you know, when I'm working here, I can't get out. Yeah. And uh, go to Kinko's. Yeah. To get him. How do you spell Satan? S A T A N. T A N. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how it's listed, right? Yep. No, I apostrophe L Satan. Yeah. No, he's talking Super Satan, like I downloaded. Oh, that's right. So. Yeah, duh. Sure. I was thinking of my own plan. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little Satan. I don't have a super Satan. Say it yeah. again, Spark. That's Larry Scarinzi's model. Yep. Oh, that's too complicated to build. It yeah, it's not as simple as a voodoo or a sneaker or any of those. Let me take a look at it. Carl Goldberg went to a lot of development work with that thing. I was surprised Goldberg never marketed that kit. <laughs> Maybe because it, it was so complicated. Well, it's not complicated. There's a lot of ribs in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, there's the same amount of rib. But then you got all that planking on the leading edge. Yeah. Let's see if they got a spectrum or a winder. And there's a Dick Tyndall Super Satan, too. Actually, I saw the Dick Tyndall, but I think that's the, called the Splinter. It, it came up the same time you clicked this Super Satan Splinter or something like that. That's a really high aspect. <laughs> well, I clicked download and it didn't download. I wonder why. It was not a bad person. Oh, that doesn't matter. Mine did. I can send you the PDF if you want it. Oh, I just I clicked that other file. Yeah, let's Come on. I've got a winder. Winder. Oh, we got a lot of these. Control line eraser, no combat. They don't have it. Hmm. That's unusual for them. They have about everything. Nope. Including the original check plans for the Supermaster. <laughs> it's a little hard to read those. <laughs> you don't need to read it. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I got them now. Okay. Only problem with the Supermaster is I would love to have that original engine, but that thing's hard to find. If you do, it's a lot of money. <laughs> well, we sold four chicken wings. Did you, you guys look at that chicken wings design? No. Which yeah. one's the chicken wings? <laughs> if you look in the open forum, if we go to the t-shirt shop, look at open forum. Yeah. There's a, I, I made a deal with uh, the chicken wings cartoonist, and I they did me a cartoon. It says, uh, the secret to control line flying is a good firm stance. And it's dragging the chicken across the ground in a cartoon. It's a cool cartoon. Let me see if I can screen uh, share. I'll look for it. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Screen share. Uh, application. No. Let me uh, open that up. Yeah, I'm looking at this super site, and that has a lot of ribs, different, just that, you know, tapered rib design. So, yeah, that's where it got its speed. It was pretty quick. <laughs> C H I C K E N. Chicken. Oh, this is. Oh, come on. Let's try this. Do this. Uh, here we go. Super chicken. Got it in the coffee cup, too. I'm going to have to get me a coffee cup. So oh, yeah, I kind of wanted one, too, but I didn't have enough money at the time, so I'll have to buy uh, uh, one on the next pay cycle. Thank you very much, Ed. They're printed every. They're printed every three days. So, send Teespring save, and we'll open this. Open. And put that over here. Come on. Come on. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna screen share what the shirt looks like because it's cool. I don't know. I don't know how you. I mean, if you can see it well or not, but there it is. Screen one. Share. Oh yeah, let's see. That's pretty cool. cool. Well, I like that. Yeah, I got them in. I don't know. <laughs> Four or five different colors, four or five different designs, coffee cups. But it says, uh, secret to control line is a good firm stance. <laughs> He's big in a trench with his heels. Yeah. How do I stop this screen share? That I don't know. <laughs> I, I think in that same box you opened it with, it's got a stop screen share button or stop it's, sharing. It's stopped now, right? Yeah. 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 It's gone. Yeah, that's uh, that'll be in the ads that pop up after the video is over. You know, it'll say visit the teacher shop. Of course, I have the other, the other, uh, the other style still available. I changed that uh, eighteen on the. On this shirt here to a, a bigger, fatter 2018, uh, but I got oh. this style and then the one that goes up and down. Plus, but the super chicken, I like those. <laughs> we'll see how they come out. It's like the sunset now. I guess I'm not going to walk out to the shop tonight. I had to kill a giant fire ant pile in front of the shop doors when I 
started going back out there. It had been since October since I'd been out there, and the ants had built themselves a regular condominium. Just made yeah, themselves at home, huh? <laughs> Y'all don't have fire ants in Colorado, do you, uh, Mike? Uh, they're red, little tiny ones. Sometimes red, we big, do. No, big red ones that bite the shit out of you. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm not a bugs person anyway. Of all things I, I had never had in my life till I moved way south in Colorado, we get scorpions of all dang things. Yeah, they don't eat much. We got scorpions down at the beach, but I've never seen one here in Columbia. I got a scorpion story for you, Mike. I was on Integration Point fishing one year. I was on. I had a 1970 server car, three-wheel Harley Davidson. I pulled up on Integration mm -hmm. Point fishing and drinking. I got got drunk and passed out on the ground. And this is the Salton Sea. Yeah. A scorpion crawled down my pants and bit me like I don't know, five or six times Ow. right by the nuts. And I like. <laughs> Ripped off my pants. Everybody is watching. I ripped off my pants and dumped them out, and here was that scorpion. <coughs> so I go, shit. So I, I drove back to the bar, and I called the hospital, and I said, hey, I just got bit by a scorpion. What do I do? She said, well, wash it with soap and water, uh, pack it with ice. It, don't go to sleep, but if your lips turn blue, give us a call. There are no poisonous scorpions in North America. That's okay. good to know. That's good. <laughs> That's very good to know. <laughs> so I wonder if he he bit you or if he stung you with his tail. Oh, he stung me. Yeah. 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 It, it's just like, I mean, just like a bee sting. Bees aren't lethal unless you're allergic to them. Yeah. Now, how big was that scorpion? Probably an inch and a half long. Okay. The ones we see around here are just about a, an inch. Maybe it's smaller than that. Are they green in your area or clear? No, nah, they were kind of clearish, yellowish. Yeah, there, there are no poisonous scorpions in North America. However, when I worked in Texas at the golf course, we had a, a centipede come out of a back. I was back reeling a lawnmower. A centipede come out of there. He had to be 18 inches long. He was green, about an inch wide, with red legs and blue eyes. And when I see him came out, come out from underneath that mower, I just about shit my pants. I got a shovel, and I cut him into three pieces, and all three pieces went different directions. Holy shit. Mm. <laughs> mm. And they, they are poisonous. Not good. I didn't know there was such thing as a centipede that big. You're, and I didn't know centipedes were poisonous. <laughs> the centipede that you see is not a centipede, it's a millipede, and they're only about that long. That's about right, yeah. But a centipede has a hundred legs, and they're red legs, and they're a foot long, or 18 inches long, and an inch one. Biggest thing I ever, I didn't know what the hell it was, and I had to explain to me in Texas, so that's a centipede. Holy crap. <laughs> I said, well, I always seen them that big, because that's a millipede. Okay. They got a million legs. <laughs> yeah. No thanks on seeing that bigger one. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I also put in when I was in Texas, I saw a spider on a tree. And it was a great, I thought it was a tarantula. It was huge. And it was hairy. So I took a stick and I was poking him. Well, that hair that was on him was his babies. And when I poked him, he was a skinny little spider, and about 10 billion spiders came off of him. So, oh. Oh, I, I got to get out of Texas. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they got some weird stuff crawling around down there. It's not that bad, guys. <laughs> that was in Leander, Texas. Leander, down by uh, Austin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I worked at Lake Travis Golf yeah. Course. I was a greenskeeper mechanic. Jim, what's going on with the music scene in Austin? I used to see Austin City Limits on TV all the time, but not anymore. I I don't know, Rusty. Uh, I'm I'm about four hours from Austin. So. Hey, if you don't think Texans like their horses, 
There was a guy there in Leander that used to give his horse a ride in the back of his pickup truck. <laughs> the weirdest looking thing you ever see. Get the horse, I mean a big horse too. Get get him in the back of the pickup truck, shut the gate and drive him around. I don't see how the horse could balance unless he was real careful. Uh, yeah, we have some we have some strange people every now and then. Everybody's really nice in Texas too when you're driving, or at least it was back then. They wave at you and on their, as they're coming toward you. They wave. I yeah, don't know yeah we now. do that in South Carolina. Not anymore so much, but now it's this wave here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see a lot of that everywhere. Way too much of that everywhere. I cannot flip the bird anymore. My fingers don't go that way. That's as close as I can come to a bird. It looks more like a fist, a pregnant you know, fist. You want to piss somebody off that gives you the finger. You just go smile at him and go. <laughs> yeah, I don't return the bird. I think that pisses them off worse. <laughs> I just go. <laughs> <laughs> What you doing, though? What you watching that doing? Oh, crap. Well, guys, I was building for a while. I think I'm going to get off. You want to start another hangout, Rusty? You can. It don't matter. I think I'm going to click off, too. i got a hangout coming up tomorrow, so I don't need to do one today. Okay. I'm ready. Ready whenever you guys are. Everybody make sure to like, subscribe, and share the videos. Make sure to check out the t-shirt shop. There'll be links in the uh, in the video about every, it'll be sectioned into four spots after the video uploads. And get one of them chicken wing shirts, buddy. I like them. <laughs> All right. All right. Pretty cool. <laughs> Again, fair winds, tight lines. See ya. See ya. All right. See you later, Jim. I mean. Uh, See ya. Jim. You guys take care.